If you're like me and you geek out over all things SpaceX and Tesla, then like me, the day that Starlink.com went live, you ran to the nearest web browser and signed up for their mailing list. And then when word of the beta program rolled out, you thought, hey, that's for me. So I signed up hoping I would get invited. For the last couple of months, various people have been putting up YouTube videos and uh, blog posts mentioning that they were in the Starlink beta test program and I continued to patiently wait for my turn. Well, guess what? It came this week. When I checked my email and saw this and I said, here we go. So first, I went and cleared it with my CFO, i.e. my wife, and made sure that we had money in the budget for it. Uh, it's not an insignificant cost to get set up even for the beta. You have to spend $499 on the Starlink uh, Dishy McFlat Face uh, kit for setting up your Starlink connection, and then it's $99 a month. And in addition to the $499, there was also some additional fees and taxes, of course, that raised the acquisition cost slightly higher than that. So anyhow, I put in my order and I'm now waiting patiently for my kit to be delivered. As I mentioned, I'm an IT professional and so I don't necessarily do things the way the average home user does. Now with that said, my intent is to go through setting this up as if I were setting this up for home use and wasn't going to be using it for my business at all. And that's probably the way that most viewers will end up using this system. Now with that said, uh, I will also th then do a second video and I'll share that with anyone who cares to watch showing how I can set it up to route through an existing uh, firewall router I have. And for those that are, are uh, into this stuff, it's a Meraki MX67 router from Cisco. And that is what I will be using to go between the Starlink network and my internal LAN. So I'll include that as well. I'll include the details of that installation as well in a second video. Okay, so your first question is, where do I start? Well, interestingly enough, one of the things that they said in the email, that the invitation that they sent me was, you need to make sure that your site is suitable and that you have a suitable installation location. In the long run, I anticipate that I'll probably put this on my roof, but for simply beta testing, that was a little bit more than I wanted to do. And frankly, if you've ever been to Northern Wisconsin in January, you know that hanging out on roofs is probably not a good idea. Uh, we, ha we actually only have a few inches of snow on the ground this year, but still, I'm not climbing on the roof in January if I can avoid it. So I'm just setting this up in a temporary location for all of you to see. And then come spring, when the weather warms up, I will order the, uh, what I thought was a very reasonably priced roof uh, installation mount. It was about 20 bucks, if I remember correctly, on Starlink. You have to have a Starlink account in order to get one of those. Um, but I figured, you know, 20 bucks, piece of cake. Uh, then I'll have to reroute the cables, obviously, to get them uh, connected into my equipment rack. Anyhow, with no further ado, I'll take you through the first step which they talked about in the invitation email, was to do a site survey. Find a good place to install your Starlink dish. And the, they made that about as easy as they possibly could have. They came out with an app. You download it off of either the, the uh, iStore or um, Google Play Store, and you install that on your phone. And then you use the camera on your phone, you basically hold the phone flat in your hand, point it up at the sky, assuming you're using the front facing camera, and then you look down at the display, and if there's any uh, shading around the edges, then that's telling you that you have some sort of obstruction. The description on their FAQ, which I will uh, link in, the, I'll show you a link in the video so that you can see that, uh, states that you need to have a 120 degree cone up from the dish up into the sky that's unobstructed. So that kind of dictates where you can put it. I mean, if you live in a, in a cabin out in the middle of the woods and your house is surrounded by trees, you're probably going to have to 
cut some trees down or f uh, find a, a place where you can at least get an, a, a relatively unobstructed view of the sky. Now with that said, if you don't do that, um, your connection is going to be spotty. It's going to be up and down. Uh, when the satellites go behind a tree, for example, you could find either degraded or lost connectivity. So it's important to select the right location to install your dish. Only three days after I placed my order, I got confirmation that it had shipped. I checked on FedEx's website every day to monitor the progress of my shipment, and lo and behold, it arrived exactly the day they said it would, and here we are. There's not much documentation that comes in the box. Basically, this quick start that shows you point the dish at the sky, plug in the cables, and fire up the app. That's pretty much all there is to it. There's also regulatory information if you care about that. Unless you've bought the roof mount, you'll use the tripod that comes with the kit. It has holes in the ed at the ends of each of the arms so that you could stake it into the ground, but now that the ground's frozen, that's not going to happen, so I'm just going to weight it down with some bricks. The documentation refers to this as Dishy McFlat Face, and it really is. The, the face of it is completely flat. If you've ever seen a satellite dish before that's concave, this isn't like that at all. The next step was to place the base where we scouted out with the app a clear view of the sky. Install the dish into the tripod, then run the cable towards the house where you're going to run it in through the wall. As luck would have it, I used to have a 10 foot C-band satellite dish back in the day and still had the hole through the wall into the basement where the cables were run for that. So I decided to pull out what was left of that cable and reuse that existing hole so I wouldn't have to drill a new one. As you can see, we have a brick house, so anytime you want to go through the wall, it's kind of a pain. I ran my fish tape from the basement out through the wall so that I could easily pull the cable in. If you don't have a fish tape, you don't do your own wiring like I do. You can just use an old metal hanger, just unbend it and push it through the hole. And then I just went ahead and used some electrical tape to hold the cable onto the fish tape so I could pull it back through the wall. Now I just push the cable into the hole, go down to the basement, pull the fish tape through, unwrap the electrical tape to expose the end. You'll see it's just a standard RJ45 Ethernet cable connection with some built-in what looks like surge suppression a few inches up the cable. Next I routed the cable over to my equipment rack because everyone has one of these in their basement, right? Took the black cable which went out to Dishy McFlatface, plugged that into the color-coded black side of the power supply, then the white cable which goes to the Starlink Wi-Fi router gets plugged into the white side. Simple as that. Now plug the power for the power adapter into any available uh, grounded outlet. Uh, on mine, I recommend the use of a surge protected outlet strip like this one, which happens to be plugged into a uh, uninterruptible power supply battery backup that I have because I don't want my network to go down if I have a power blip. Within a minute or so of plugging in the power, you'll see that Dishy McFlatface will turn his face to the sky, scanning for the nearest Starlink satellite. Now that we have things connected, we go into our phone, choose our new Starlink Wi-Fi network from the list. That takes us to a setup page on the Starlink website. So here you put in the name that you want your Wi-Fi SSID to be, the name of your Wi-Fi network, and then enter the password, retype it to make sure it's accurate. And then after a short reboot, then you should be able to connect to the network, which you'll find in your Wi-Fi screen. Once you connect, then 
it's going to go out do whatever it does in this case Android is setting up the Wi-Fi connection and boom we're connected so now that we're connected we need to go and check things out is it working let's go to our friend speed test and give it a whirl and see how we do well that's nice certainly far better than my landline at this point actually this is the best uh, test that I had I've ranged between anywhere from 60 up to this one which was 137 megabits per second so nothing to sneeze at okay so there you have it that's all it takes to set up your Starlink better than nothing beta kit and get online beginning to end including putting the dish out in the yard running the cable and getting everything connected and configured it was about an hour uh, the actual part where I was setting up the dish and configuring it and adding my Wi-Fi network was 10 minutes maybe 15 so it's as easy as that you don't have to be an IT guy like me this is so easy I can't Im I can't imagine anyone having a problem getting this working but if you do they do have a support uh, section of their website that you can go in and open up a support case so if you're wondering how hard it would be to bring up your Starlink network connection now you know